when people meet me and they find out that I've got a loving wife and a loving daughter and an amazing career working with some really big brands and that I have ADHD, they're often surprised. And so am I, because I wasn't supposed to be here. You see, in seventh grade, I was taken down to the guidance counselor's office to schedule my eighth grade classes. And there were my mom and dad in the guidance counselor's office, and I wasn't expecting that. The guidance counselor was going on about how George shouldn't be in the academic level classes next year. He should be in the basic level classes or something. I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> but my ears did perk up when she said to my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Cece, your son is not going to go to college. As a matter of fact, he's going to have a hard time getting out of high school. Now, I knew this wasn't the case. I have friends and family that didn't go to college. My grandmother didn't go to college, and she founded an empire of a business within the dance industry. My best friend didn't finish college, and he is the head of IT for a massive national corporation. But the thing is, I wanted to go to college. You see, I have this uncle who's just 10 years older than me. He was going to Duquesne University. And when he would come home from college for any family occasions like Thanksgiving or Christmas or anything like that, it was an event. The family would swarm him and ask him all these questions. How's college going? What are you doing for fun? What classes are you taking? And he would talk about these exotic subjects I've never heard of before. And for fun, I remember this one time, he said that he and his friends stayed up 24 hours in a row at a dance-a-thon to raise money for a children's hospital. And I said, that's what I want. I want that. I want to be able to stay up 24 hours in a row with my friends at a dance-a-thon doing good things for good people. But also, I want this experience of coming home from somewhere and having people be like, hey, it's George. How you been? And I idolized him. I begged my parents, let me go to college with him. They relented. I went for about half a day. And I went to Duquesne University. And he took me around, just me and him and some of his friends. And I got to see his dorm room. And it was so cool. Once again, this is in the 80s. And I remember he had, he had this Devo poster. And he had the tiny mini fridge. That's the first time I had seen that. And I'm, I'm loving it. I'm like, this is, this is it. I need this in my life. And then he shows me where the rest of his classes are. And they're not all in one building. We walked between buildings to get to his classrooms. This is getting better by the moment. The piece de resistance is I had to go to class with him. There was one he couldn't get away from. And so we sat in the back, and he took notes. And I doodled and ate the microwave popcorn we cooked out in the hallway. <laughs> I'm in. I want to go to college. But there I was in seventh grade being told, you're not going to have any of that. You're not going to have the homecoming because you are not going anywhere. You sure as hell aren't going to eat microwave popcorn in the back of a lecture hall. In eighth grade, I was pulled down to the principal's office this time because I was bouncing all over the place in gym class acting like a crazy person. My dad was called away from the company he runs to come up and talk to the principal. They said, Mr. Cece, we think your son's on drugs, possibly speed. <laughs> My dad vehemently defended me and said he's just enthusiastic and energetic and you're lucky to have him as a student. And what I learned that day from my guidance counselor was also pulled in because I might have been on speed. The great irony here is that in my Walkman was a cassette tape from Minor Threat. Look the band up. The irony will just slay you. They're a straight edge band. Okay, that's the punchline for that. But the guidance counselor and the principal basically that day said to me, if you want to succeed in eighth grade, like that's a goal, and get to ninth grade, like that's a goal, you need to sit down, shut up, and be quiet. Here's the thing. I'm genetically incapable of sitting down, shutting up, and being quiet. Nobody with ADHD is genetically capable of sitting down, shutting up, and being quiet. I didn't know that at the time. I only found this out after I was diagnosed at 31 years old at the behest of many good friends and a loving wife and a daughter who was tired of me losing my keys and I couldn't drive her anywhere. But when I was able, after treatment, to have a slower mind, and read my first books from cover to cover at 31 years old, I became obsessed with who I was, ADHD. I don't have it, I am it. And I found some amazing things out. There are these, study, these scientists who have studied genetics, and they found out that the three main traits of ADHD, impulsivity, risk-taking, and constant novelty-seeking, 
you know, finding new ways to do something when you don't need to find new ways to do something and stopping projects to start new projects because they're more exciting, or call it ingenuity. Those same three traits are tied to a genetic mutation on the DRD4 gene. This genetic mutation inhibits the production of dopamine, the feel-good chemical. So in order for people with ADHD to feel good, we need stimulation. And if we don't find stimulation out there, we will cause the stimulation. <laughs> we will fight. We will draw extremely long penalties in hockey games. We will skateboard, we will snowboard, we will go to punk rock concerts in the dangerous parts of Pittsburgh every Friday and Saturday night for six years in a row just to feel normal, quote unquote normal, our normal, not your normal, but to feel good. The same scientists also found out that this gene mutation has been positively selected since time immemorial. Now, if you're like me, you had to look up what positively selected meant. That means that whenever somebody, one of our caveman brothers or sisters, exhibited those same three traits, impulsivity, risk-taking, ingenuity, they got to mate more often. This is usually the point when people with ADHD in the crowd kind of sit up a little more proud, feel <laughs> less ashamed. But why is that? What do these three traits have to do with passing on a gene? Think about it. We're in the same tribe or clan of cave people. It's nighttime. We're sitting out in front of the cave. We have a little bit of a fire going. And out beyond the edge of that fire, beyond what we can see, there is a very slight snap of a twig. Now, there's about 100 of us here right now. That means between five and seven of us are off into the night with spears, and we sink them into whatever made that sound. Saber-toothed tiger, bear, wolf, whatever it was. We return to the tribe we saved, and we mate with your partners. <laughs> And this is phenomenal if we're being hunted down by saber-toothed tigers. But how do we take a survival mechanism in the Stone Age and turn it into a success mechanism in the 21st century? You do it by purposefully engaging the fight-or-flight response. See, people with ADHD, we are the fight-or-flight response. Our nervous system is primed to live with our heads on a swivel and constantly look for that saber-toothed tiger because we are ready. And when it happens, we are at our best. When things are at their worst, we do better. So how do we bring this fight or flight response about? The better question is, when do we bring this fight or flight response about? We bring it about at the moment of overwhelm. Now, everybody experiences overwhelm at some point in their life. The people with ADHD experience overwhelm multiple times a day because our brains work so fast and you have all these ideas going, a billion ideas flowing at once and you have immense physical energy and you have all this going on and you're trying to do all these things at once except there aren't enough outlets for all the energy and all of a sudden, boom, you shut down. Shutdown is what kills careers for people with ADHD. There's that moment before the shutdown though where it feels like the world is collapsing in on you and you want to run away from whatever it is you're doing, that's overwhelm. That's when we pick up the spear. Now, the spear in this case is a pen. And you do a very simple exercise called a brain dump. I keep this notebook with me, or one just like it with me everywhere. I've gone through about 70, 80, 90 of these. And the second you start to feel it's tightening your chest, you feel like the world's collapsing around you, you crack open the notebook and put pen to paper and you start writing. It doesn't need to be legible to anybody but you. It doesn't even need to be legible to you. It doesn't need to be grammatically correct. It could be thoughts, it could be words, it could be entire sentences, it could be doodles, it could be whatever. As fast as it comes into your head, onto the page. Into your head, onto the page. Into your head, onto the page. Over and over and over again. Front page, back page, front page, back page. For as long as you can and something amazing is gonna happen, it's just gonna stop. And it's just gonna stop because you have been impulsive. You have allowed yourself to do this. You have engaged fight or flight. You have jumped into the darkness, sunk the head of the spear into the saber-toothed tiger. This feeling 
is what we get after we get in a fight, after we disrupt a class. It allows you to take all those ideas you had before that were swirling and coming at you at light speed and categorize them, to prioritize them, to do things with them, to create. The real superpower with ADHD is learning to balance the two sides of this gift. It's knowing when to go into fight or flight so you can use these ideas and work with people and do mundane things like balance books and knowing when you need to take your hands off the wheel and be impulsive and be a little reckless and take risks and have that flight of ideas. Everybody with ADHD needs to master this skill. It's not good enough that we saved the human race and we got us to here. Because the human race is facing a lot of big problems right now. And the only way out of it is going to be with impulsivity, risk-taking, and ingenuity. Thank you.